Hello and welcome to my review of Astral Chain, the latest game from Platinum Games exclusive to the Nintendo Switch. It's a character action game like many that Platinum has gotten us used to. And hopefully with this review you'll be able to make an informed purchasing decision and I'll say right up front that I really like this game, but it does have its problems. At the end of the review there's a score, but it's important to understand what these games problems are so you can decide for yourself whether that's something that will bother you a lot or not. Let's jump into it. Everything starts with you creating your character. You can choose a male or a female character and slightly customize hairstyle and colors. The character creation isn't too in-depth and whoever you don't choose ends up being your brother or sister in the game. And they are a major character in the story. This is a universe where Earth has been invaded by a mysterious enemy. The chimeras come from different dimensions. They come through portals and attack civilians, sometimes even dragging them back into their own world. In order to defend itself, humanity has created this artificial island called the Ark, where it was safe for a while until the chimeras reached it. And you're a part of Neuron, a special police force created specifically to fight the chimeras. And you're able to to do so thanks to your special weapons and the domesticated chimera that you're able to control with your astral chain. These chimeras are called Legion and they're humanity's main weapon for fighting back against the chimeric corruption. Gameplay is split between several different moments. Typically, you start at the police station. You can talk to your colleagues and sometimes they'll have side quests for you to complete. Typically, these side quests are talking to someone else, grabbing items, etc. The police station is also where you can upgrade your weapons, customize your legions with different colors and customize your own outfit with different clothing parts and color schemes. There's even a training area where you can try out different abilities or just practice combat in general. After you're done with the police station, it's time to head out on a mission. Missions take place in these hubs. I wouldn't necessarily call them open, but they're definitely meant to be explored. There's a lot to find in each of these missions and the game truly rewards exploration. Even if the path looks linear, sometimes just talking to a random character will open up a new quest. There are multiple side paths with items and more side quests. Some areas are more prone to exploration than others, but in general, this game encourages exploration and dialogue. It encourages you to explore the rich world they've created and learn more about its people. And then we have the main missions. There's a lot of combat, which we'll talk about in a second, but there are also a lot of puzzles for you to solve with and without your legion. There are platforming sections, there's a lot of variety and the game keeps throwing new surprises from start to finish. The platforming can be a bit finicky since you're basically using your legion to pull you to different platforms but other than that I have no complaints about the different types of activities there are. You've also got some police investigations. You gather clues by analyzing different things in the environment, by talking to people, eavesdropping and then someone will ask you what happened and you have to choose the right clue. Sometimes these questions can be a bit misleading but if you fail to get the right answer the game will just continue. The only thing that will happen is you might get a lower score at the end of the mission. It does feel like you failed at your police work though. The character's response and the sound effect when you fail really point that out. But you're not forced to retry or anything, the game moves forward. Overall this game moves really well. The different activities keep the game fresh from start to finish, but of course this is a game from Platinum, so a lot of it is going to live or die by how good the action combat is. So let's break it down. The combat in this game is both very familiar and fairly unique. It starts simple like many other games. You have an attack button, a dodge that you can time to slow down time and counter, but don't let the simplicity mislead you. You can do a lot with only one attack button. For instance, you can delay the button mashing to do something different. You can hold the attack button to charge a different attack. You even have motions like spinning the stick 360 degrees before pressing an attack button or flicking it back and forth. And you have a total of three weapons that you can switch on the fly. You have a gun, you have a fast baton and you have a big ass sword. And you can do all of these moves with each one of these weapons. And then on on top of that, you have your legion. After you summon your legion, it will attack on its own. You can order them to attack or retreat, depending on the situation. And while it may look like the legion just fights on its own at first, you actually do have a lot more control than you think. During your combos, you'll see your character shining once in a while. That's the moment to press the legion button and unleash a sync attack. These sync attacks are different depending on the combo you performed and the weapon you're using, so there are a lot of ways to perform sync attacks. You can even do it after a perfect dodge or right before you're attacked for a parry. But those last two will only work if you've already unlocked those abilities, because each legion has a talent tree. The more you unlock, the more you can do with your legion. Sure, it attacks on its own, but you do get to dictate a lot of what it does. Each legion has two skill slots, for instance, so you can equip multiple abilities that you activate manually. You can also embody your legion and use their abilities directly. For instance, the sword legion lets you slash your enemies from any angle. The arm legion lets you wear the legion like an armor. You still take damage, but you power through enemy attacks without being interrupted. And even on their own,
down, legions have different properties as well. Sword is fast, archer has ranged attacks, axe has a big shield and so forth. And these abilities can be useful not only in combat but also in puzzle solving. You'll find that each legion has its use when it's time to find a solution. So the combat in Astral Chain ends up being very unique, mainly because of the legion controls. And once you master it, it can be incredibly rewarding. Because there is a lot to this combat system, and at the same time, at lower difficulty levels, you can definitely get away with just smashing the attack button and timing your dodges. So at the end of the day, it's as complex as you want it to be. You don't have to use all of these abilities, but they are there. And you can use them if you want to. And that's a very difficult balance to strike. The only issue I have with combat is not a new one by any means, and it's the camera. Sometimes camera issues are impossible to dodge, especially in tighter spaces. It's hard to see what's happening. This is a game full of particle effects and flashy attacks, so when the camera starts acting up, it can be hard to follow the action. It's an old issue and not an easy one to solve by any means, but unfortunately Astral Chain was not the game to crack the code on this one. Story-wise, I love this game. The writing is very good. They've managed to build a rich world with a robust history that has led to the events that play out during the game. Characters also have interesting personalities and backstories. Some of the villains could have used a bit more fleshing out, some of them just feel like they're villains for the sake of it, and the game doesn't do a great job of explaining their motivations, so maybe they could have done a better job there. But each of your major character allies has its own arc that is well integrated into the main narrative. It doesn't feel like we're stopping the action, we're stopping the main story to learn about these characters. It's all very well done. And most of it is voice acted, even side quests. And the voice work is great, in my opinion. There's only one big caveat, which is the protagonist does not talk. The character you picked is completely mute for the whole game, and in my opinion, that breaks the immersion a lot. Silent protagonists aren't new, but when voice acting is this good, and the characters are this well developed, and you're at the center of it all, having a mute protagonist kind of takes you out of it. This was a very odd choice, for sure. The game looks and sounds great, very good art direction, love the environments, the character models, the enemies, it all looks very good. Not all the areas are killers, but some can be absolutely breathtaking. And the soundtrack is without a doubt one of my favorites this year. It's a mix of choir chants, epic strings and metal during fights, it sure got my blood pumping in the right ways. Unfortunately, it's also troubled by performance issues. Frame drops are constant, it doesn't happen so much in fights as it does while exploring, which is odd, but I appreciate that, but still, it also happens in fights. Though I can't say I ever died because of frame rate issues, so I wouldn't say it's terrible in my opinion. But if you're very sensitive to this kind of stuff, it can be infuriating. I mostly played in docked mode, but handheld mode runs pretty much the same as docked. Though in my opinion, the screen can be a bit small to tell what's going on. I also had this problem with Bayonetta, especially when fighting in tight spaces and the camera decides to not help you at all. Still, it's good that you don't have to sacrifice performance if you want to play this in handheld mode. Now let's talk numbers. It took me 23 hours to beat the story, and this was while doing a lot of exploration, trying to clear all side missions I could find. I didn't do them all, because I didn't find them all on my first go, but doing a lot of exploration and the main missions, 23 hours was how long it took me to beat this game. But that's not all, because this game has a lot of replayability. Every time you beat a chapter, you unlock that same chapter on a harder difficulty, in case you want to replay it with a bigger challenge. There are also certain items and quests that are unavailable until you replay a chapter, because you need to unlock certain legions to be able to do it. These legions sometimes give you access to new areas you've never seen before in these levels. And then there's also trying to get the S plus rank on each mission. Completing these and other side objectives will also unlock a lot of new items for you to customize your own character. So it's not just a matter of getting a better score, you're also getting rewarded for your efforts. If that's your type of thing, then you've got a lot of hours ahead of you, trying to really complete this game. But if not, there's also something here for you. After you complete the story, the game feeds you many new missions. These are usually rather straightforward. The game just kind of drops you in an area and asks you to kill a bunch of monsters. But within these missions, you'll also find a lot of new bosses. Bosses that are not available in story mode. Maybe they didn't get the cut or maybe Platinum Games went all out with post-game content. Either way, if you're a fan of the combat system, there's a lot for you to fight after the game is done. And now that you know my thoughts on the game, it's time to score it. And if you're new to this channel, we use letters to score our games. F and E are the bad games, D and C are okay or mediocre, B and A are the good games. And this is my score for Astral Chain. I've been waiting for you. Camera issues, performance issues, and the mute protagonist almost knock this score down, to be honest. But in my opinion, there are a couple of things that make up for that. One, the combat is so much fun, and it's fairly innovative and unique. The way you control your legion and what you can do with it makes this more than just your usual action combat system. 
And two, the amount of effort they put into replayability and post-game content gives this game so much more value. I usually just play the story in these types of games and then I'm done. But I had so much fun playing this that I don't want to be done. And I'm happy the developers gave me a lot more to do in this universe, even after I beat the story. And that's my review for Astral Chain. If you're new to this channel and you like anime games, make sure to subscribe, because that's all we do here. And as always, thank you very much for watching. My name is Globku, and I'll see you guys next time. Boy.